Hi guys, today I want to address a common problem that I see people facing when they are getting started with running open source language models on their own computers. Let's say there is a brand new model that's out, it's very popular, you want to try it out. So you try to find that model on Hugging Face so you can download it. But the first thing you come across is the model name. And there's various components to this model name. You don't exactly know which one is best for your environment. Worse yet, if you actually go look at the files that are inside of this model, you'll notice that the model names are even longer. They have more segments added to the model name. And especially for somebody that's new to all of this, this can be very confusing. And that's what I want to address today. I will break down the model names into smaller chunks. And without getting too technical, I'll walk you guys through each section. I picked a model name. As you can see, this is Vicuna 13B 16K GGML Q5 KM. What does this all mean? It's very confusing, but let's start with the very first section of Vicuna. So this is the name of the model. You have seen things like Llama, Falcon, and Wizard. And sometimes you'll see two names combined together with the dash. That indicates the models are related in some way. And typically, if you go into the model card in Hugging Face, you'll be able to figure out how they are related or how they are combined. After the name, sometimes you'll see things like V1, V1.2, and this just indicates that the model has gone through various iterations. And if you are looking at a list of models with the same name, but one had a higher version number than the other, obviously you want to pick that one, the higher one, as that will be the latest and most up-to-date. Following that, you might have seen things like Uncensored, Chat, Instruct, and for code llama, maybe Python. And this indicates what the model is best suited for. So for example, if you were going to fine tune your own data set, you might use llama2 uncensored. And if you wanted to have more of a chat GPT question and answer experience, you might choose llama2 chat. 13B, this is the parameter size of the model. You might have seen 7B, 34B, 70B. So the B here stands for billion. The parameter size is a measure of total number of learnable parameters in a model. So with a much bigger parameter size such as 70B, the model has taken in way more information learned from various sources. If you can think about Wikipedia, a lot of different texts all over the internet, and therefore it is more capable and is able to produce more complex answers and more accurate answers, to be honest. So then you might be asking, why wouldn't everybody just use the biggest parameter size model there is? And this is because as parameter size gets bigger, so think of models with 70B or with Falcon 180B, it requires more and more computation power to be able to run inferences on your local machine. So. That's why it's critical that you align your compute capacity with the proper parameter size model. 16K. Depending on the model, you might actually not see this in the model name sometimes. This might be embedded in the model description. So what is it? This is referring to the context size of the model. And this is represented in tokens. And K here meaning a thousand. So in this example, this model has a context size or window of 16,000 tokens. The tokens that you input into the model, as well as tokens that are generated by the model as a response, all counts towards the context size. Once the context window is filled up with enough tokens, the model has to truncate the tokens from the context to be able to ingest newer tokens. So a comparison would be you have memory, and once your memory is full, you start to forget things. So let's say you're interacting with a question and answer model, and you ask it a question, the model gives you a response. In the next question, you refer back to your previous question or answer, and it doesn't remember because it reached the context size. In that sense, having a larger context size would be beneficial. GGML. So this section, of the model name is referring to a specific format of quantization. So instead of GGML, you could have seen things like GGUF, GPTQ, and essentially quantization is referring back to the parameters that we saw earlier. So 13B, 70B, and so on. 
These parameters or model weights, as they are represented as floating points, are then compressed to save space and computation requirements to be able to run them. So typically, smaller model size, they run faster, but at the same time, they can also reduce quality in the output that they produce. For example, if you had a model that was 4-bit quantized, each weight is represented using only 4 bits. This reduction in bit width means that the range of values that can be represented is limited, which can result in rounding errors and a loss of precision, and this is what could make the model less accurate. Now that we know a little bit more about the process of quantization, let's get back to GGML. GGML is a particular way of doing quantization. So to be able to run the GGML models, you'll have to use the Llama CPP library. It was initially created for inferencing on CPU and Apple Silicon chips. And also recently, Llama CPP also supports inferencing using GPU. One thing I learned recently is that GG in GGML actually stands for the author's name, Gorgi Greganath. Yeah, if you didn't know, there's that. GGUF is actually a, a newer version of a quantization method that Llama CPP uses. So it actually replaces GGML. And in the recent version of Llama CPP, GGML is no longer supported. But there's other libraries like COBOL CPP that still supports it if you actually want to use GGML still. It's supposed to be very extensible, making a future proof. And this is done by storing all the metadata that's often entered manually uh, into a database that's packaged with the model. And of course, it is still very CPU oriented and Apple Silicon oriented as well. Last of the quantization method that I want to go over is GPTQ. So while GGML and GGUF models are optimized for CPU, GPTQ quantized models are designed to be used with your GPUs. If you had a nice graphics card, so maybe a 3090, a 4090, GPTQ models might be the one best suited for you. And if GGML and GGUF had Llama CPP, GPTQ models have several different libraries that you can use to actually run inferences on these models. So a popular one might be AutoGPTQ or XLlama. So sticking with GPTQ, we want to take a look at the last segment of a model name. In the last three slides, we took a look at various methods of quantization. And this last segment of the model name indicates the parameters that are used for quantization. In this example, the parameters can be broken down into three sections. So the bits, and the group size, act order. So just going back, 4-bit here means that the model weights are quantized using 4 bits per weight. Smaller the bit size, less computation resources you require to run them, but at the same time, it has less precision. 32G, this refers to the group size. So think about the parameters or the weights in a model. This indicates how many of them are quantized together or grouped together. And similar to the above, this will have an impact on the computation resources that you would need to be able to run these models after they are quantized. This last parameter controls the order in which the model weights are quantized. It's used to achieve better compression or to optimize a model for specific hardware, such as GPUs with different memory bandwidths or computation capabilities. So just to reiterate, Group size affects the balance between accuracy and memory requirements, while act order can be used to achieve better compression for a particular hardware. Let's change gears and jump back to a GGUF quantized model and take a look at the last segment of the model name. And once again, this last section indicates the various parameters that are used for quantization. The notation that you see, Q5KM, is particular to a new quant method introduced by Llama CPP called KQuants. So this method provides multiple levels of quantization granularity, ranging from 2 to 6 bits. So instead of using a single bit width across the entire model, KQuants allows varying bit widths for different parts or tensors of the model. The very last part of the notation so M in this case, 
refers to the mix of quantization levels used in different parts of the model. So M actually stands for medium, but there's also small, represented as S, and large as L. And I'll walk through the three different sizes. So for small, lower bit width quantization is used, leading to more aggressive compression. And next up for medium, a balance is struck between compression and accuracy using a mixture of medium and either low or high bit width. And lastly for large, the model leans towards less compression, relying on higher bit widths. When I looked at the benchmarks provided by Lama CPP on KQuants, this quantization method was achieving near original model performance. So think about FP16 benchmarks. And at the same time, it was reducing the size and potentially boosting the inference speeds as well. As a recap, if we take a look at the notation as a whole, so the number that comes after Q indicates the bit precision, and the K stands for the quantization, K quantization method, and the M or the S or the L indicates the quantization levels used in different parts of the model. That's about it guys. In the description, I'll provide all the sources that I used to create this video. So thank you so much.